started with the program. Uh, our first speaker is uh, uh, Gary Brun. He works with New Jersey Future, where he's a policy manager. Um, he has a long and um, very successful history in working on all kinds of uh, development issues, um, most, most recently, I think, with the Department of uh, Transportation. Um, and, you know, roadways, uh, they cover a lot of land in the state of New Jersey. And when we, when we cover those up, uh, we, get, we get runoff, and that runoff can uh, cause problems. So he's going to introduce the concept of what a, a stormwater utility is and some of the other um, solutions that are available. And um, by way of example, before I turn the microphone over to him, which is always difficult for an elected official on my local school board, um, I want to point out one, one gift you can take with you that, that I feel is sort of special and, and typifies uh, what natural systems are able to do. But I didn't bring it with me, so hold on a second. Uh, up front here, we have this little white thing. Um, that says Flood Defense New Jersey, which is the coalition of organizations working together um, on, on this stormwater issue. And you might not know what this is, but if you've ever waxed a car or ever seen like late night TV, the sham wow guy, you know, this is a chamois. It's a super high absorbent chamois. And the analogy here is before we had um, the ability to uh, create stormwater utilities and green infrastructure, which acts like a sponge to absorb water, the only way we could protect ourselves from the flooding and polluted runoff was to use these chamois. And uh, today we're lucky that there's a law in the books that allows us to explore this as a possible solution uh, for communities like around Lake Pacon. So um, take one of these with you. They're really helpful when you have a spill or you want to shine your car. So I want to make sure we make that clear. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn the mic over to Gary. Thanks so much. For those of you who don't know about New Jersey Future, just a quick little uh, spiel for you. And you probably don't. It's a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization based in Trenton. It's a policy research organization. A lot of what we do is centered around development and redevelopment and infrastructure, making sure that cities and towns are strong in an infrastructure sense. And obviously, that's why we're here tonight. There's some information up here if you're interested further. Um, I do share with Ed, by the way, um, some background in Lake Opaca. When I was a, uh, a young child in sort of the late 60s, we had a place in uh, Mount Arlington. I think it's called the Espinong Market, if that's still here. Oh, yeah. there it is. So I'm quite familiar with, uh, I did not I do not remember though the, the kind of traffic I went through tonight at uh, 5 o'clock on Route 80. I don't remember that. So there's been a lot of obviously development over the years and that's probably maybe why we're here. So part of my job is to talk about uh, what is a stormwater utility. Um, governor recently signed legislation, if you're familiar, if you're not, it was about a month or so ago. And it provides the um, authority for a local community such as this to consider that as a tool. It is not required, it is permissive. It is something that each town has to figure out whether it works for them. But if you're familiar with, as you probably are, a water utility um, and a sewer utility where we pay our water bills and our sewer bills and those, those monies uh, remain in those respective columns, right, for water, drinking water for sewer service purposes. Stormwater over the years has been funded from the local budget. It's not had a, a dedicated uh, source of funds. So what this stormwater utility basically is, is a special assessment district that does just that for a community that wants to do it. It dedicates a fee that is charged on what's called impervious surfaces. If you're not familiar with the term, that would be where rainwater hits and runs off of a, a roof, a driveway, Right? Our impervious surfaces, that's what drives stormwater. And as stormwater travels, it picks up along the way anything from pesticides, right, to oil and grease and, and all that and ends up in the local waterway in, in many cases. So the thought behind the stormwater utility is basically a dedicated source of funding that would, um, that would fund projects that are otherwise competing in the local budget against the usual things that are comprising the local budget police, fire, schools primarily, right? And usually coming up a distant, uh, you know, 10th or 11th in that list. So over the years, a lot of that infrastructure has aged. In some cases in New Jersey, it's over 100 years old. 
and we're doing work on an emergency basis, right? Which is, if any of you have ever done that in your own home, that's probably obviously the most expensive way to do business. A lot of communities um, want to get ahead of that and start thinking about what they face in a stormwater sense. What are the challenges? Certainly the, the lake here has challenges. You know them better than I do. Um, but this is primarily a funding mechanism, and it's primarily a dedicated funding mechanism, which makes it a little unique. The other thing that's unique about it there are credits that come with this program, but that are unlike the water and sewer bill that we all have. There are no credits that I know of on that. But if you find ways to mitigate the runoff from your property, and there's ways to do that. If you're familiar, if you're not familiar with the term green infrastructure, rain gardens, things that take the water and keep it on the site, absorb it into the on, on the site. There, there's also uh, projects that create a buffer between, let's say, the lake and your property to make sure that the runoff doesn't reach the lake. These are all green infrastructure projects. They mitigate or they reduce the amount of runoff that's reaching the lake, right? For a business or a homeowner who does that, whatever the fee that is established, there's typically, and actually it's mandated in the legislation, there would be a credit against whatever the fee is if you do that. Because the ultimate goal of this particular dedication is to accomplish just that, to reduce the amount of stormwater runoff to the lake, or to the stream, or wherever you happen to happen to live. In this case, obviously the lake. So that is fairly a unique piece of uh, of the program. And um, gotcha. <laughs> um, just wanted to point that out. So why is the problem getting worse? Uh, many of you may be familiar with the press. Um, 2018 was the wettest year on record. Not sure how you feel about that, but the fact of the matter is, that it seems to be. Uh, more precipitation than ever before. Uh, that's one reason. The other reason is obviously that infrastructure is aging, and the infrastructure we're talking about is below the ground, and people don't often see it. It's not like a pothole you hit with your car. It's down there, and in many cases, the developer has came in, built it, and he's long since moved on, turned it over to the town, which has other challenges in a fiscal sense. So that's a big reason why many towns are struggling with this, and they're and they're um, they're at least considering the possibility of, of a stormwater utility. Um, just want to make a couple other minor, minor points. If you funded this program with property tax, there would be no relationship between the amount that you pay and the amount of runoff from your property, right? There is no relationship between the value of your property and how much water runs off of it. But there is a relationship in this program because the way it's set up, as I said, is the impervious coverage is assessed throughout the town. They figure out what your piece of it is. And ultimately that, and once they strike a rate, and the rate is built on, basically built on how much work needs to be done in the town, that becomes the fee that you pay. So there is a direct relationship, right? Between, unlike property tax, between the fee and the service that's involved, and it's dedicated. The money doesn't go for anything other than the projects that are truly needed to be done. Just a couple of quick points. I know we want to keep this short, um, and I think we'll have time for Q&A later, but that's the basics of, uh, of the stormwater utility. Thank you.